Good morning guys from a snowy Krakow, Poland. Today we are doing something that we weren't sure we were going to film. We're actually heading to the site of one of the world's worst atrocities and that is Auschwitz, the concentration camp. There were actually three concentration camps, Auschwitz, Auschwitz II and Auschwitz III. Um, I think we get to see maybe one or two of them today. It's just the site of some of the worst things known, imaginable to us. 1.1 uh, million people there were killed between May 1940 and September 1945. Yeah, like I say, we didn't know whether to film it. Um, it's difficult. I don't know exactly how to do this. I don't want to walk around with the camera filming and everything. You want to be as respectful as possible, but it's something that we need to remember, something we should never forget. So things like this, like that, don't happen again. Um, we're actually getting the bus there. We wanted to do it ourselves again, rather than doing a tour. I didn't really want to go and book a tour today. I just wanted to go myself and learn as we walk around. Tickets to the Auschwitz Museum are actually free of charge. Um, however, you can book tours if you wish. Like Matt said, we didn't really want to go down that route. I don't want to be walking around in a big group with headphones in. I'd like to learn it myself. Um, so we booked the time for around 1.15. It's nearly 11 o'clock now. It takes an hour and a half to get there because it is outside of Krakow. Um, and we've come to the bus station the main bus station here in Krakow, um, I think we are going to be getting it at about 11.10. Is it a local sure. bus or? It's a, yeah, it's a local bus. It's about four stops. I think we have to get off at the last stop. Just saying that you're getting the bus to Auschwitz is gives you the shivers. It must have been something over 80 years ago that no one wanted to hear. And when they heard it, they sort of knew straight away what was going to happen, the consequences of that, and their fate was almost already sealed. Um, I don't know, it's a real sombre one today, but it was always going to be. Um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know how we're going to film this, we'll just, we'll just go with flow and learn as much as we can and show you and film what we can and when we can. After an hour and a half, we have made it to the Auschwitz Museum. Just for reference, the tickets for the bus were about um, 14 zloty, so it's about four pounds to get here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd, I don't really know what to say. It's not really something we wanted to film, as Matt said, but it's something I think you kind of have to show. So we're gonna go and see, I did reserve the tickets online, we're gonna see what the process is, how we get in, and I think we're probably at least half an hour <laughs> early actually managed to figure out the tickets we have the barcode already but I think if it's not so busy especially during COVID times you can go to the, the desk and you can just get a ticket for whatever time slot is next before you even go in it's like the stock reminder the reality of it they've got photos all about the liberation when the Red Army when the Soviets liberated the concentration counts back in 45 but the pictures of the kids are just hard to look at made it through into, I think this is actually Auschwitz one that you go in first. This was more of the worker camp, so a lot of the men would be sent here um, and sent out to work each day. And the sign at the front as you enter was, work sets you free, which obviously wasn't the case. It's unbelievable to think of how many blocks there were. Um, this is block four and it goes up and up and up. Each of these sections is its own block and each block there is a certain museum that you can go and see. Some of it you can't film, um, but it's just, I have no words. You know, one of the, this is partly the reason why we didn't want to film something like this is because it is so hard to put into words what you're seeing. In block four, we actually just saw the women's hair. It was like a mound. A mound, and there just so much hair, and it's just, it's just shocking.
blocks one to ten were actually used um, for women and block number ten here which isn't a museum it's all closed off was actually used as a place where they would perform experiments on the women it is so hard to just understand the thought process and the evil that went into to making this place most of the gas chambers were actually at Auschwitz too um, Birkenau but there is one here that was used for people that were suspected of being in the underground resistance but you don't only have the gas chambers you also have where they were also cremated and you can see in there the whole building is still or well, the ceilings are just dark black where it was burnt and then when the liberation was coming the the Nazis tried to burn everything down and get rid of all the evidence I don't even know what to say what words to say um, but Auschwitz one is definitely more of a museum very factual um, and it is a lot to take in we have seen the museum now and I believe we have to get a shuttle bus over to Auschwitz Birkenau because I think it's about three kilometers away um, yeah I just I just have no words it's kind of really strange to be talking about it the shuttle bus to Birkenau takes only about five minutes and then right outside you're slapped with the train tracks leading into Auschwitz Birkenau Auschwitz too so many people arrived here from all over Europe, um, not only Jewish people, a lot of Polish, a lot of prisoners of war, to meet Hitler's final solution. Um, not many men really came here at first, it was mainly women and children because this is where the gas chambers were and they thought the men could work so they weren't immediately sent here. The entry point into Birkenau is pretty much just past the train tracks um, we're now in. This is would be where um, all the prisoners will be taken and they'll be taken off the train and separated into different groups women children and then men they're obviously able able to work but I don't know the size of the camp here is huge and to think that a lot of the camp here was was gas chambers is just so 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 eerie It's really difficult to put into words how vast this is. Like I did not expect it to be this big and I think that makes it so much more harrowing on the, you know, the basis that this is just absolutely humongous and- So much of it's destroyed. On this side, there's literally just remains of God knows what because they destroyed everything and they don't really know. So what we know might not even be half of it half of what actually happened just walking through you can see all these buildings that have been destroyed you can see the chimney on each of them and it just shows how many of these just in this area here were gas chambers It's said that they keep these really long paths so you can get a feel walking up and down what it was like for the people when they were being led off the trains or led to their barracks or even even the gas chambers. We actually got to look at um, some of the barracks and they're different on either sides. The, the men's uh, over to the left were actually designed originally back in Germany as like horse stables and they were made for like 20 horses but in there they put 400 men and then on the other side with the the children and the women the conditions are just just terrible um we're walking out to the exit now um auschwitz one is definitely more of a museum you're going to find out more information there and then birkenau is just sort of to get the feel the, the, the how, how big it was to see where they're kept it's kept a lot more raw here rather than just sort of 
more information um, you can actually get a headset we decided not to we got the headset in the killing fields in Cambodia as there wasn't so much information um, but here we wanted to walk around ourselves and sort of take it all in well, that was a very difficult experience. We are actually in a new location now because we didn't really know how to end you that video. You need some video. time to reflect, get your thoughts in the yeah. correct. I don't know the correct, I don't know really it's how to so, say it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a, hard. It's a very hard place to go. It's a place that you've got to go. It says on the walls and some of the signs that if you don't remember there, history can repeat itself. It's literally what I was about to say. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a specific sign in one of the blocks that says something along the lines of those who do not remember should be sure to keep repeating this. And I think it's mm -hmm. very important that everyone remembers what happens. Um, to stop things like it happening, happening again. again. We, we, we know it, it has happened again. It happened again in Cambodia, mm -hmm. 40 years later, 30 years later. Um, it's just a way that if everyone goes, we remember it, um, they're never forgotten. I'm sure they never will be forgotten. Auschwitz one is very much a museum, which I would probably say take more time in there. You can yeah. learn more, uh, you can take in more, there's a lot more information. And then Auschwitz two, Birkenau is very much very raw. That's sort of like the striking place to That's to where you, you really you really see how evil it was. You Nothing's know, it changed was massive, there. nothing has changed. It's harrowing it gives me shivers to mm -hmm. even think about it so being there is a completely unique and very but if you're going to do anything experience. if you're going to do anything in poland one thing to do is go there because yeah. you'll learn so much more things to come in poland definitely um, stay tuned for them they're not all going to be Auschwitz concentration camps but it's somewhere like i said that needs to be remembered so we'll see you in the next one exploring poland <laughs>